And joining us on the line right now is Representative Mike Rogers, the current chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman, thank you very much for joining us. Brian, thanks for having me. All right, so I want to get right to a bit of news that sort of broke yesterday, uh, broken by the Wall Street Journal and confirmed in other places. President Barack Obama apparently sent a secret letter to the supreme leader of Iran, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, uh, and described the fact that they had a shared interest in fighting ISIS. Uh, this has been a rather controversial move. Uh, what's your reaction? Well, it's very concerning. We saw this before, Brian, with the secret negotiations on the first round of the nuclear uh, talks with Iran. That caused us real problems with our Sunni-led Arab League partners, uh, number one, Israel, number two. Uh, and it kind of it, uh, certainly uh, caught off guard our European friends as well. So now that he, we're trying to repair that damage that's been done, uh, and we've stalemated so far on Iranian negotiations to keep them from a nuclear weapon. The only thing we've done is given them more time and money. Well, now here we go again. So I have to tell you, our Arab every one of these things have consequences, which is why I think they probably sent a secret letter. Uh, is the fact that they're trying to keep it from our Arab League partners, who they know this will cause problems for. Well, right now in the front lines of this fight against ISIS are our Arab League partners. And so I think it's, uh, you know, this is just dangerous at the best. And uh, were you surprised when you heard this? Well, unfortunately not, uh, because we've seen this before. And we've, we've tried to have that discussion with them the last time that, A, we... You know, even in kicking off these negotiations, we didn't think was appropriate without proper notifications. Um, and for this very reason, by the way, that it causes all of these other problems. That's why you don't you have a notification process to try to avoid some of these things. And uh, I, I and I'd like to tell you, I'm surprised and shocked and dismayed that they would do this, possibly at the expense of partners who are in the fight right now against ISIS. But, Brian, I'm, I, I've watched the way they work for now, six I, years. I'm I, not surprised. Let me just follow up. What is the upside for this and from their perspective? I mean, they wouldn't have done it if they didn't feel like there was some upside. Can you see any potential upside to this at all? I, I can't. You have to remember, Iran has uh, you know hundreds of U.S. soldiers' blood on their hands. They introduced very sophisticated uh, IED technology uh, in Iraq, we know that they've participated in events to help uh, bad folks target the Americans in Afghanistan. Uh, they're in Bahrain causing trouble. They're in uh, Yemen causing trouble. Clearly in Iraq, they've created a whole host of problems. By the way, they're still the biggest supporter, uh, them and Russia, uh, with the Assad regime, which is the stated U.S. policy to get rid of Assad. All of that is going on all at the same time. You know, you don't climb in bed uh, with, uh, you know, as they say, you put a snake in your shirt, I guarantee you you're going to get bit. Well, that's exactly where we're going with Iran. I, I, it's really frustrating to me that the administration has just decided, you know what, we're going to do this at all costs. We'll give them what they need. We're, we're going to get a deal. We'll just keep giving until we get it. Uh, we're going to show the world that we were right about Iran. That's just such a dangerous uh, posture, and it's not based on realism, and that's, again, what's so concerning about this. Uh, Chairman Mike Rogers is with us, Chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. And I, you, you just mentioned, you know, you're not entirely surprised because you've been dealing with this administration for six years now. I wonder if you could just, uh, uh, for our sake, so that we can understand uh, what you're dealing with here, what, draw the distinctions between what it was like to work with the Bush administration. And I'm guessing this has nothing to do with party. This has to do with just an approach an administration and a chief executive and a commander in chief takes with regard to the war on terror and how to work with Congress uh, in in the you know to defeat our enemies. How did Bush approach it versus how the Obama administration approaches it in terms of dealing and and, and bringing you along with with the with the fight? Well, I mean, again, it's uh, probably anecdotal is the best way to describe that. So as a member, not a chairman of the committee, uh, I probably had four one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, in the Oval Office with the President of the United States, George W. Bush, on pretty sensitive counterterrorism efforts in, um, in the Afghanistan uh, region. Uh, more, more than 12, I think, with a larger group of national security-type members uh, in the Situation Room where he'd have discussions, or the Eisenhower Room. Uh, I have had exactly zero meetings as chairman with the President of the United States on any of these issues. Uh, I've had a couple of meetings in the Situation Room 
uh, that were, uh, I hate to say it, a bit dysfunctional as far as meetings go. Uh, no conclusions, no to-do list, none of that comes out of these meetings. Uh, and that's really about the extent of it. I, I've had no serious one-on-one -on -one discussion about national security issues with the president himself. Uh, I did have one with the vice president, but we had to ask and, uh, and keep working on it to get it. It took us a few months to get that meeting. It, it's the oddest thing I've ever seen. Uh, we continue to do our work that we do through the committee, but it, I think it just shows you the disengagement from the severity of these issues, which is why I think they make mistakes like this, and they repeat these mistakes because the center of, of uh, or the number of people that they talk to is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And when you do that, when you become that insular, uh, you're only repeating each other's ideas, that's when you're going to do something really crazy at the expense of your allies, like sending a secret letter uh, to the Iran regime that's trying to unseat all of these Sunni-led uh, nations from their ability to govern their own countries. Yeah. Can I, just a quick follow-up on that, because I think that that's a stunning revelation that you've had uh, in your role as chairman, that you haven't had any one-on-one -on -one meetings with the president. Is this a partisan thing? Are your Democratic counterparts on the committee having more meetings with the president than you are? No, I think they're more frustrated than uh, we are as Republicans. Wow. Uh, they, again, they have a very small group of advisors. Uh, it's not a clear lineage of who makes the decisions. Normally, the chief of staff runs the White House. Uh, for my Democrat colleagues can continue to tell me they're not sure that's exactly how it works there. I mean, it's, it is a very odd way to do it. And, again, my Democrat colleagues are more frustrated, I think, at the administration and how they handle members' relations uh, than Republicans are. I, I suppose to some extent you expect a little bit of that, uh, although in national security issues you should expect none of that. This, uh, you know, we're certainly, right. I have supported the president when it wasn't popular with my party, for sure. When I believed it was in the right interest for our national security, I supported his efforts, even in Syria recently, on going after al-Qaeda affiliates in Syria, who we knew were to be plotting attacks on the United States. So I'm, you know, we're continuing to be positive where we think it helps and try to be constructive where I think they're getting off track. The problem is um, there's not a good, clear line of communication that yeah. they use to do that. And so if this is a bipartisan frustration with the president's and just lack of engagement on the depth and severity of these national security. Well, it's interesting that, uh, you know, the president has a closer communication relationship with the Ayatollah Khomeini than he does with the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Just saying. Hey, listen, uh, time is running short. Uh, <laughs> I did not get a secret letter. I'll tell you <laughs> All right. So tell me a little bit about uh, your reaction to the outcome of this election. Well, I think it's fantastic. I, you know, I do caution my Republican friends. It's not the euphoria about how we presented ourselves as Republicans. Uh, which means we will have to govern in the next two years. It is so critically important uh, that we govern. Um, but I think Americans were tired of the policies and a little bit nervous about the foreign policy pr uh, issues that the president has created. I mean, you can't turn on the TV, and it looks like the world is in chaos. Your job is paying less, and you're getting less hours. I mean, there was nothing to be excited about with all of these Democrat policies that they foisted on us this last six years. And I think that reality bell went off for a lot of Americans said, hey, this is not working. So they gave us a chance, uh, Republicans a chance. I think we have a lot to offer every demographic, every race, every religion in this country. Right. I think this is our chance to show America who we are and what we can do. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to have to do that. We can't fight amongst ourselves for the next two years. Well, and let, let's take this moment to point out that uh, uh, Chairman Rod, Mike Rogers will uh, not be commenting on this new Congress from within the House of Representatives. You're, in fact, going to be our new colleague here on WMAL with your uh, daily observations played here. Yeah, Just we, learned about that yesterday. Well, yeah, so we'll do a commentary uh, uh, three times a day across uh, hundreds of stations across the country, including WMAL. Uh, most importantly on yeah, WMAL, yeah. Don't, don't forget, Rogers. we're at the top of the list. Come what on. I meant to say was it's WMAL. <laughs> and some other and, and, and someone else, else may pick it up. <laughs> Thank you, Mike Rogers of uh, the great state of Michigan. Thanks for joining us. Hey, I'm learning, fellas. <laughs>